Hey guys, it's Mac and welcome to the YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss how to create a professional business card design step-by-step -step using Adobe Illustrator. So let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in Adobe Illustrator with a standard artboard size for a business card. Now before diving into the design phase, let me show you how you can set up your document for a business card design. Open a new document from the file menu and then set the profile of your document to print because your business card will be printed eventually. Increase the number of artboard to two and then make sure to set the units to inches for your document. Once the unit is selected, enter the default dimensions for a business card which are 3.5 and 2 inches in terms of width and height respectively. After that, set a small bleed value around 0.125 and also set the color mode of your document to CMYK, which is used for print purpose. So once everything is perfectly set up, simply hit OK, and you will get a document like this with two standard artboards. One will be used as the backside, and the other will be used as the front side of our business card. Now before starting with the design process, let's see which type of business card design should be preferred for a business because as a designer, you must know the difference between good and bad design. Now if you switch from Illustrator to Google and search for some business card designs, you might come across some fancy and wild business cards that look attractive and beautiful in the first impression. However, the reality is totally different and these fancy designs are not practical. Despite clients occasionally requesting fancy designs, it is important to keep the practicality in mind and design simple business cards accordingly. Have a look at this example that I've extracted from Adobe Stock. The two examples on the right might still have some big portion covered with bright color, which is acceptable. However, if you look at the first example, it has nothing but a simple vertical rectangle and the rest of the card has white space. Now this is a very good example of a professional business card because it's very simple and has no fancy wild vector graphics. In today's video, we will also design a simple business card like this and try to add just a touch of vector design, just to ensure that it's not completely blank. Now back into Illustrator, the first thing to consider is the bleed area around the artboard. The bleed area is that part of our design which is trimmed once the business card is printed. So we will extend some design part from the canvas to the bleed area, so that when the design is printed and trimmed, the required part of our business card will still be there. So with the rectangle tool selected, create a rectangle which includes both the artboard and the bleed area. Change its color to pure white from the color picker. You can see that we've included the bleed area which will be trimmed after printing. So we will extend any vector part outside the main canvas. For the styling of my business card, I'll be applying this color scheme to my design, but you have to make sure that you follow the brand guidelines for your business and use the colors accordingly. So once more with the rectangle tool selected, create a rectangle at the bottom side. I'll change its color to the dark shade from my color scheme, and you can copy the hex code if you want to follow along. Zoom in on the canvas, and create a copy of this rectangle. Now change its color to the bright yellow shade from the color scheme. Now go back to the canvas, zoom in on the rectangle and decrease its height quite a bit and make it really small. Now zoom in further on the bottom side and arrange these rectangles to create a nice layered pattern. Just like this. Now before adding the text and other important content, we will create a safe zone for our details inside the canvas. So once more select the rectangle tool and click anywhere on the artboard. In the rectangle pop-up, write some standard dimensions for the safe zone which are 3.25 and 1.75 in terms of width and height. Hit OK and you will get a rectangle like this. Click here to swap the fill with stroke and then align this rectangle to the center. Open the color picker and change its color to something different so that it doesn't match the rest of your main design. Now we will keep our main content inside this safe zone. After creating the safe zone rectangle, once more zoom in on the bottom side and adjust these vector layers so that a suitable amount of space is covered at the bottom. Now we can add our brand logo in the center. I'm using this sample logo from stock website, but you can use your own brand logo. Align this logo to the center of the artboard. However, the logo is not looking visually centered because of the design at the bottom side. So you can select the logo and slightly move it upwards so that it looks visually centered. Okay, so now we can add a helpful website link at the bottom using the same typeface as our brand. With the type tool selected, write a helpful link at the bottom, just like this. Change the paragraph alignment to center 
and then apply this secondary color from the color scheme, just to make sure that the text is not too dark. Now ensure to follow your brand guidelines and use a similar typeface as your brands, which is Poppins in this case. Decrease the font size to a value around 7 points, and then align this text to the center of the artboard. Now place this text at the very bottom, but ensure that it is placed inside the safe zone rectangle box. Now zoom out to see if things are in line, and the backside of our business card is almost complete. Select the rectangles from the bottom, and create a copy. Hold down the Alt key and decrease the width quite a bit. Now rotate both these rectangles like this, place them here, further rotate them, and now adjust the position at the top right corner. Zoom in on these shapes, and move this yellow rectangle to the starting point of the shapes. Once everything is organized, select the shapes and adjust their position according to your preference. Now the back side of our business card is finally complete. For the front side of our design, create a copy of these rectangles and place them similarly on the second artboard. You can also remove the safe zone rectangle from the back side and paste it on the front side and align this rectangle to the center. Now start adding the rest of the content inside this box. The first thing we can add is the name and designation. With the type tool selected, write your name in the first place. Adjust its paragraph alignment to left, and also increase its font weight, and font size to around 10 to 12 but not more than that. Now align your name to the edge of the safe zone rectangle, and then slightly move it so that it's not too close to the edge. Now create a copy of this text, and write your designation. Change its color to the secondary shade from the color scheme, and decrease its font weight to regular, and also decrease the font size to around 6. Now place the designation closer to your name, and adjust its position. If you feel that your name is not looking very prominent, you can slightly increase the font weight. After the name and designation are done, we can add the rest of the contact information here at the bottom left corner. Import some useful icons from the internet or illustrator, and align them to the very left edge of your name and designation. Once the alignment is done, move them to the bottom left corner of your artboard. Now add the contact information in front of these icons. Create a copy of this text from designation, and write your contact number using the exact same styling. Now complete the rest of the information in similar way, and also write the address in the end. Now select all this text, and once more click on the contact number, and then align them to the very left edge like your name and designation. Now take your time to vertically align these lines one by one with the corresponding icon. First align the contact number with the phone icon, then your email, align the website link as well, and then finally align the address. So once the alignment is done, select everything and adjust the spacing. Now you can add your logo on the right side. Copy the logo from the back side of your business card and paste it here. However, I'm going to use only the logo mark for my front side instead of using the complete logo. Scale it up a little bit and then align it to the center and then slightly move it upwards so that it's visually centered. Zoom in and adjust the size if the logo mark looks too large. So the front side of our business card is also complete, but one thing that remains is the background rectangle. Copy the background rectangle from the back side and place it behind everything on the second artboard. Just like this. Now you can also remove the safe zone rectangle from the front side because it's not needed anymore. Now zoom out to see the final output of your business card design. Make some final adjustments if you feel that the logo mark on the front side is not adjusted. Also, the information on the front side is a little bit closer to the edge, so select everything and slightly move the information away from the left edge of the artboard, and slightly adjust the top and bottom padding. Just like this. So once everything is perfectly organized, your design is ready to be printed. To create an output file of your business card, go to File menu and save your document as PDF. Once you click on the Save button, a pop-up appears where you can find additional settings. Go to the Marks and Bleeds section and check the box which says Trim Marks. 
and then simply save your PDF file. So this will give you a nice output file with the additional trim marks, and you can see that even if the business card is trimmed from the bleed area, the required portion of our business card still remains, and that's what we want. So here is the final design, and this is how you can create a professional business card design with a print-ready output. Don't forget to like this video, and also subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.